Hello, Keith Rocker here at VengeMachinery.org. So today we're going to be changing that pace a little bit and doing a little bit different kind of project. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you guys how to hand cut dovetails. And before I get into this, I want to give you a little bit of the backstory as to why we're doing this. So uh, every, each year for the last several years, uh, Keith Fenner, who is a uh, YouTube creator, uh, machinist, uh, has a machinist channel on YouTube, he has been doing a toolbox giveaway that he gives away a toolbox full of machinist tools to a young uh, person, or maybe not a young person, but a person that's getting into the machinist trade. And it's a project that he's been doing for several years. This year, uh, Brad Jacobs, who's another YouTube creator, uh, the basement shop guy, uh, I think his name of his channel. Uh, he actually kind of spearheaded a group of, of YouTube creators, uh, such as myself, uh, to come together to create some handmade tools to go into the Keith Fenner Toolbox giveaway. And uh, I actually was trying to volunteer to make some parts for some of the projects coming up. And every time I, I, I said, hey, I'll do such and such, it's like, oh, sorry, Keith, I've already got someone to do that. So uh, they're, one of the projects they're making, though, is a, a little machinist vise, like a toolmaker's vise, uh, that is being done by different people who are contributing different parts uh, to the whole project. And uh, one of the things they wanted for that was a wooden box to put the machinist vise in so that it'd have a nice box to store in. And I said, all right, hey, I'll make the wooden box. That's something that probably most of the machine shop guys are not as set up to do as the woodworking and something that I can do. So I have decided the material we're gonna make this out of is gonna be walnut. I've had some walnut pieces. These were already playing down to 3 8 inch, uh, which is just right for making a box. And uh, I have made a lot of hand dovetail boxes before, so I thought this would be a fun little project. So today's video, what we're gonna be doing is showing you guys the steps of making hand cut dovetails. Now, why hand cut? Uh, you can obviously go out and buy a jig that you can use with your router and you can machine make dovetails all day long. And I'll be honest with you, I've never done them that way. Uh, from very early on in my woodworking, I learned how to hand cut dovetails because it is kind of the, the, the woodworking joint that I think people consider to be you know, the artsy thing or the shows good craftsmanship. And I said, you know what, if I want to be a woodworker, I need to learn how to master hand cutting dovetails. And I have spent a good bit of my time over the last 15, 20 years uh, doing projects that contain dovetails. I made a chest on chest, chest drawers for my oldest daughter one time. It had over 200 hand cut dovetails just in that one cup, one project. So I've got a good bit of experience doing it. However, it quite honestly has been several years since I've done any dovetails. I've already got started on the project, but we're going to go again through the steps of hand cutting dovetails. And to start with, I'm going to show you the tools that you need, the hand tools you need to hand cut dovetails. So before we get into this too deep, let me just start out by saying that I'm gonna show you the tools that I use and show you the methods that I use to hand cut dovetails. And this, there is by no means a right and wrong way to do this. Like so many things that I do, there are many ways to skin a cap. I'm gonna show you how I do it. I'm gonna show you how I learn how to do it. I'm gonna show you the tools that I use to do this. Can you use other tools? Absolutely. You don't have to have this exact set, but this is how I'm doing it and this is what we're gonna do. So what are the tools you need? Well, number one, uh, you know, we need a, a good uh, hammer here, a mallet here uh, to use with my chisels. I like using a wooden uh, mallet. Uh, they come in different styles. This is one I've had for many years and I've uh, kind of grown accustomed to using it. I like it. This is a little uh, angle gauge for laying out the dovetail uh, angles. And this one is a one to eight ratio. So for every, um, there, there's eight units in this angle, so it's a, a, an angle here, one to eight. So one here, eight that way, uh, which is the recommended angle for doing hardwoods. So if you're doing softwoods, the uh, angle ratio is a little bit steeper, so one to six ratio, and I've got a gauge for that as well. The nice thing about this is, is that one side you've got the angle, the other side you've got a square, uh, and you need both of those for laying out dovetails. I've got a, a steel rule here, just a scale. Uh, for making measurements with. I've got a, a small selection of chisels. I've got a complete set of chisels up to I think two inches. But for what I'm doing, you know, these four here, this is from I think a quarter to a half inch or maybe a five eighths. I'm not, I'd have to get out my tape and measure them. But anyway, a selection of chisels. Uh, a dovetail saw. Uh, this is a uh, 
a fairly new saw. I say fairly new. It was probably made in the 90s uh, by Independence Tool Company, which is no longer making saws. They actually sold their saw making business to Lee Nielsen. And I think Lee Nielsen is making a variation of this one. This was the old original Independence Tool Company, though. Uh, and you can find old dovetail saws. You can find uh, several companies making new dovetail saws. Also have an an Adria saw that I really, really like. Uh, in fact, I actually like it a little bit better than this one, but uh, it's not in the shop right now. It's somewhere else. So uh, I'm going to use this, uh, this one. A dovetail saw uh, is going to have a real fine uh, tooth in it, and it's going to be sawed in a rip configuration rather than cross cut. So if you don't know much about hand saws, uh, the way the teeth are filed, you either have it for doing cross cutting across the grain are ripping with the grain. We're gonna be using a rip saw here. Uh, and I'll also say that, you know, some people prefer uh, Japanese hand saws. I'm not a Japanese hand saw guy. I, this is the kind of saw I like. Uh, and I know we'll probably have some comments, people saying, oh, you should use Japanese saws because they're better. I don't think they're better. Uh, I think they're just fine. It's a preference thing. I prefer the Western style hand saw, and that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, we have a marking gauge here. We're gonna use this for laying out our lines. And then finally, just a little soft blow hammer. And I use this more on the wood when I'm putting my joints together. It's a little no more uh, hammer for that I can hit on the wood and not worry about denting it, and a pencil. So there you go. There's the tools we're gonna be using. Let's get to making some dovetails. So I've already got my blanks cut here that we're going to be uh, cutting the, the box out of, and I'm not really going to go too much into coming up with the sizes. We're not showing how to make a box. We're showing how to cut dovetails. Uh, so the really, but just trust me, we've got all this worked out. And I've actually already cut some, as you can see. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is take your marking gauge and measure the thickness of the piece of wood that you're going to be cutting. And I just usually put it in there like such and tighten my marking gauge down because we're going to need to scribe some lines on here. And I've already actually got the line scribed, but we'll come through here on all of these pieces and scribe that line in there that will be used as a reference uh, when we're sawing our depth of our cuts and also for doing the chisel work. Uh, so just go ahead and do this on all of your, all uh, sides of your dovetails. That's the very first step. And it needs to be, that depth of that needs to be the same as the thickness of the wood that you're cutting. Another thing that I'd highly encourage uh, you to do is to have a sample uh, dovetail joint that you've cut and just keep this as a reference. It really helps you when you're doing this. Uh, I've cut a lot of dovetails, but I'll be honest with you, I've cut some out backwards. I've cut the wrong pieces out. And sometimes it's just helpful to have a reference that you can look at. And this is actually a uh, dovetail joint that I cut many years ago when I was first learning how to cut dovetails. This was actually a practice uh, dovetail joint and I've kept it all these years uh, because I can easily put this together, take it apart, look at the pieces, look at the corners and it just again helps me uh, to do my layout work and make sure I'm doing it right. So have a good reference handy uh, to look at. If you don't have one, make one. Just go make a practice set of dovetails and uh, keep this handy uh, for future re references down the road. So with dovetails, you've got uh, two different parts that you're cutting out and uh, they're called pins and tails. Now the tails are the actual dovetails and that's where you look at it on the face side and that's the part that flares out and that's what they call the dovetail. Uh, the other piece, the piece that fits into it here, uh, like such, that's the wrong side, like such, uh, this piece is called the pins. And you look at it, again, you can look at it from the end, it's just gonna look like straight pins on the face. And uh, on the ends, you do see a little dovetail, but again, look at it from the face. So the face side, you got a, just a, a squares, it looks like pins. This is a dovetail, so these are your tails, these are your pins. A lot of controversy out there as to which you should cut first, pins or tails. And if you read a lot of these different uh, people who have written articles on cutting dovetails or watch other videos, uh, you'll quite often find people very adamant that you need to either cut the pins first or the tails first. I'm here to tell you it does not matter which one you cut first. Uh, I have cut dovetails both ways, where I cut the pins first and I, or I cut the tails first. Uh, but generally speaking, I like to cut pins first. Again, that's my preference, 
and uh, that's the way I learned and uh, that's generally what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my tails first. So we're going to take our short piece uh, that we're going to cut our tails out of and we're going to put it in the vise. I always work uh, with the face side toward me uh, because I'm going to be sawing here a little bit and uh, the face side is the outside, the side that people are going to see. And I want to make sure when I saw down to that line that I'm sawing right to that line and not below it. And sometimes if you get your saw a little bit at an angle, you may go below the line on the uh, opposite side. Uh, and if you do that on the inside, it's really not that noticeable. If you saw below the line on the face side, it's very noticeable. So I always lay these out and always, and I have, I, I will mark my pieces. I'll put on here face side. You can't see it because this wood's so dark, but I put on here, this is the face side. It's the side that's going to be facing me. And uh, we're going to put it in the vise and tighten it down. So I've got the part set up here. And one thing again, this is a very critical stage. Uh, you need to make sure you lay these out in the right angles. And again, this is where my little template that I made before really comes in handy. I've got on here my face side. I know my face sides before me are, are going toward me. I can lay this up next to it and I can look and say, okay, I know which way I need to draw my lines. I'll need my lines going in a certain way. And I'm going to take now my, uh, little template here and we're going to go ahead and lay these out. I'm just using a pencil. Again, this is some dark wood. You may not be able to see this really well in the video. Um, and one thing that I like doing too, and this is just again, a personal thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm making hand cut dovetails and I want them to look like hand cut dovetails. And one of the things on hand cut dovetails is that they're not absolutely perfect. You can tell there's a little bit of a variation uh, from one to the other. And I typically lay these out by eye using proportions. If you're getting, just doing this for the first time, you may want to measure them and get them all kind of laid out. But I just lay them out by eye, uh, getting my proportions the way I want them. So now I want to come in. I've got the tops of the pins laid out. I want to get straight lines going up and down. So again, I have something to work off of as I'm sawing these. So I'm just going to transfer where these uh, lines come out and draw a line straight down to my mark below, uh, which is my depth. I'm going to do that for all of them across here. Another thing at this point I think is very important to do is make sure that you mark on here what part you're cutting out because again it's very easy to come in here and actually cut the wrong part out. And again that's where your reference piece comes in handy. You can lay it up here and say okay I'm cutting out that, I'm cutting out that, and I'm cutting out that. Now I know what part I'm removing. I get my hand saw and before we start sawing with the hand saw let me just make a couple more comments here. Uh, sawing is an art that you have to learn. It's not something that you're just going to pick up a handsaw the very first time and make perfect cuts. I one time took a dovetail cutting class uh, and it was a weekend long course in hand cutting dovetails. And half of the first day, all we did was practice cutting with our handsaw. We would draw lines and we would cut to those lines. And uh, it is something, it is a skill that you can master with practice. But if you're not used to cutting with a handsaw, you need to practice. So if you're first getting used to doing this for the first time and you don't have a lot of practice using a handsaw, or even if you've got a new handsaw that you're just not familiar with, just go get you a piece of wood and just make a bunch of cuts and get used to it. It really makes a big difference. Next thing, when we're sawing, we want to keep this blade as level as we can. We're going to have the line here to go to, uh, and that's going to help a lot, but we want to get the backside. We don't want it to be high or low. So you try to keep your saw level. Again, that's something that you can get through good form, through practice of just sawing. And when you're sawing, uh, what I want to do is I want to saw down this line and I want to get as close to that, these lines that I made 
without actually cut, making the lines disappear. I want to leave the lines there. I would much rather this dovetail joint be just a little bit tight than too loose. I can always take a chisel and take a little bit more wood off if it's a tight fit. If I got a loose fit, there's really not a lot I can do. There are actually some things you can do after you glue them up to, if you make a mistake, to kind of fix it. And we're going to show you some of those tips, but it's better to try to leave that line there and uh, to have a little bit of extra wood that you can take off later on. So I'm going to come in here and we'll just get started. hard to see on this dark wood but we'll go through here and we'll cut all these cuts another thing that I would recommend you do is when you get set up on this angle you've kind of got your body and your stance set up cut all of them at that angle and then come back and cut the other ones at the other angle because you're going to physically be moving your body between each one of these cuts if you're not. And it just helps keep them all at a constant angle if you'll cut all of these uh, and then turn around and, and re-get a new stance and cut the other ones. So we removed the piece from the vise and now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and chop out uh, the parts we don't want. Again, make sure that you mark on here what your waste is and so you don't remove the wrong parts. If you've cut many dovetails, you've cut the wrong part at some time. You don't want to do that. Take your chisel and here's a little trick here too. Lay it down. We've, we've got the line that we scribed across the bottom and I like to scribe that rather than mark it with a pencil for this reason right here. You can now take your chisel and pull it back and when it gets on that line you'll feel it snap right down in there. And we're just going to take, we're not trying to chop them off at this point in time. I just want to take a couple of light taps and uh, cut the top part out. Went just a tad low on that saw cut right there. Not a big deal, we'll show you how to fix it later. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing. All right, so now you want to make sure again that you have your chisel right there on that line. This is going to be the bottom of your joint and you want it to be straight all the way across. You don't want it to be wavering. Um, once we kind of get that first little cut, we want to have that nice and sharp corner defined. From there, I can kind of come in as an angle. I don't really care if the bottom of that is kind of hollowed out a little bit or if it's not perfect. It's really not going to matter. Uh, but the next step here is, is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to take the chisel. I've got a little stop here, a little dog in my bench. We're going to take our chisel and we're just going to go ahead and, and remove that little bit that we just cut off. Watch what you're doing with your chisels. Uh, you know, I'm not putting a lot of force when I'm doing this by hand. Make sure your chisels are sharp. Uh, I always hone mine right before I use them every time. Uh, that way they stay sharp. A 
sharp chisel is a much safer chisel than a dull chisel. You're much less likely to have a slip and have an accident. Alright, now we'll flip it over. Remove that little waste from the other side. I'll go to a slightly wider chisel now. I could have done this earlier. And now we're going to go ahead. I'm going to hit these pretty hard now. And I, I go straight in and I tilt my chisel toward me just a tad. I'm, it's, we're not talking about much, just a little bit. And I'm going to hit it pretty hard now and just try to knock that out. On these uh, 3 8 inch pieces, it doesn't take a lot to do this. If you're cutting thicker wood, you may have to remove that stock a little bit at a time to get it out. But now you see we've got our pins pretty well roughed out and cut. Uh, I will come in here with a chisel and I'll just kind of clean everything up. Make sure we got a good flat bottom. Make sure there's not any high spots in there. If there is, taking your chisel, you can come in here. Not hitting it with a hammer, just working it by hand. If you got a good sharp chisel, I notice I'm choked up on it pretty close to the bottom there. So, you know, I, if I slip, I'm not going very far with that. And I just kind of work these uh, corners, make sure everything is real nice and it looks good. So one mistake that I see people make all the time is that once they get their pins cut or their tails cut, depending on how they start, they want to come back in here and then using their little dovetail to lay everything out uh, to cut the next one. When what you really want to do, what we're after here is we're not after a perfect joint. We're after a joint that fits together perfectly. And again, it may not be exactly like the one on the other side. That's not important. What's important is that it all fits together. So use uh, the, the pins here in this case. We're going to use this as our template to lay out the other side because this is what we're trying to match. So I've got these laid out. I've got my face side up. Again, you can't see the marks on there, but trust me, I can read them. This is my face side up. I'm going to turn them both down where my face side is down. Okay. And then this corner is going to just fold up just like such. I'm going to lay it on here and I'm going to take my pencil, making sure I got everything nice and flush on all sides. And I've got my marks transferred down there. Again, now it's a good time to mark what you want to remove. So we're removing that, we're removing that, we're removing that, and we're removing that. And we'll come back to our vise and uh, we'll lay this out again. Cut it out again. I've got the marks that I transferred to this side. I then again, using my little square tool, I came in here and put my lines across the top uh, just as a guide. And uh, we're going to cut these out again. So in this case, instead of cutting this way, we're going to be cutting at angles. Again, practice, practice, practice. Leave your lines and we'll make all of our cuts in one direction. Then we'll come back and make our cuts in the other direction, uh, just like before. And we're going to leave the line. Rather than cutting the ends off of the chisel, we're just going to do it with the saw right here. So we'll come in, saw down that one, and grab the other side. Now 
now let's cut out the other with the chisels. Just like before, we'll take our chisel, we'll come in here and we'll cut our waste out. Exact, exact same process. So now we'll come in here and we'll start to put it together, or at least lay it up there. And uh, this is where you can see it's tight. And again, that is exactly what I want. I want this joint to be tight right now. I don't want it to fit together perfectly right out of the batch because that means I've got room that I can go in here and clean this up. And I can tell that I needed to shave off just a little bit on, on these two pins or our tails here, either one. I'm gonna take a chisel, I'm gonna come in here Same thing on this other side. Choke up on your chisels. Don't let them get away from you. You'll cut yourself. Make sure the bottoms are good and clean. All right, let's try that again. And we can see I need a little bit on this one. I'm gonna take this one off the pin because it's not quite square. That's pretty tight, but I'm gonna see if it'll go together. Taking my hammer and it fits together. And we've got a nice tight dovetail. So right here, I've got a little gap. It's telling me that this bottom probably needs to come out a little bit more. So let me tap that back apart. Fill that one right there. All right, we're coming together nicely. And um, we got a little bit more fine fitting down here. This bottom here needs to be taken out a little bit right here in this corner. So there you go, guys. That's the process of hand cutting a dovetail. It's really quite easy. Uh, like anything else, though, it takes practice. 
get out in the shop, spend a Saturday afternoon, and just crank out a bunch of these. The first one you do is not gonna look great, but everyone thereafter is gonna get a little bit better. And with a little bit of practice, you'll be an expert at cutting hand cut dovetails. Now there are a few little tricks that you can use to clean these up when we start putting them together. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these cut out. And when I get ready to glue this box up, we'll come back to you and I'll show you some tricks on how to maybe hide some of your mistakes that you make along the way because everybody's gonna make mistakes. I've got all my dovetails cut now. My box is ready to assemble and I've got my pieces laying down here uh, below me here. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and get this kind of oriented the way it's gonna go together. And um, I've got my, my sides marked as to what goes where with letters A, B, C, and D in the corners. So I match up uh, the right part to go with the right part. All right. So these two go together, these two go together. And then once we get those two parts together, we can put the whole box together. Now, um, as far as what I'm gonna use to put this box together with, uh, I'm using just plain white Elmer's glue. I'm not using wood glue here. And the reason for that is, is because um, I'm gonna put a clear finish on this. Uh, if you're gonna stain it, this will even be more important. But the, if you use a yellow glue, you're gonna have that yellow tint uh, in your glue joints. And what I would much rather have is a clear or really a non-colored uh, glue in here for that. So for that reason, I'm just using white glue. Uh, don't worry about it not being yellow. They do actually make some wood glue that's yellow, but wood glue is kind of, yeah, there's some special things about wood glue, but when you get down to it, it's all glue. Uh, it, it should hold together just fine. So I'm gonna be using white glue and um, I'm just gonna squirt me some out here on a piece of paper. I've got me a little acid brush here that I'm gonna be applying the glue in. And uh, I'm just gonna start with this first joint and uh, get in here with my brush and just get plenty of glue in there. I'm not too worried about being messy. Obviously I wanna try to keep the glue that gets on the box parts down to a minimum, but I'm just, we're gonna be doing a lot of sanding, particularly on the outside. Uh, when this is all said and done. I'm not too worried about it being just perfect at this point in time. Uh, we can clean that up later. I would much rather have plenty of glue in here to hold it together. All right, and That one goes together. I will go ahead and take a rag and wipe this up. And same thing on the inside once it goes together. Uh, a damp rag here works really well. Uh, again, we're just trying to minimize the mess. We wanna get plenty of glue in there. So let's go ahead, we're gonna do this joint next. Let's see, we'll start this side. I don't guess it really matters, but that's how I did the last one. this one together. There we go. Got to get it oriented right. And again, I'll go ahead and wipe this up. So we can go like that.
All right, for this piece, I've already got my piece I'm gonna use in the bottom cut, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. So when I, it's just gonna be glued in place uh, all the way around. And we'll probably take a little finishing nail or two just to put in there after it's all said and done, uh, just for some added measure. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. And you know, depending on the box you're making, you may or may not have a bottom in it like this. One nice thing about having a bottom like this is, is this kind of helps you um, get your part squared up while you're putting it together. So that should fit right down in there, just like such. All right, I'm gonna move my glue out of the way right now. And we don't wanna waste any time at this point, um, but we wanna go ahead and start putting some clamps on here. And what I typically will do is I'm gonna clamp it just to the inside of the joint. I want the pressure to be uh, closing the joint up together. So if you look, my pads are to the inside and pushing on that wood. I don't wanna just really crank down tight on this to the point that I'm deforming the wood, but I wanna push that joint together as tight as I can get it. And uh, we'll do the same thing going this way. And I'm gonna use lots of clamps. Uh, we wanna get this good and tight. Put some up closer to the top. I can see glue squeezing out around my joint there, which is exactly what I want. I want it to tighten in there and get good and tight. See the glue squeezing out in there. That means I'm all the way down on that bottom, which is right where I wanna be. Can't have too many of these little clamps. All right. So uh, that's in there. Make sure my bottom is flush on the bottom, it is. So now, make sure I'm happy with all these as far as how tight they are. And I think I am. We're gonna let that sit. Um, but one thing we can do right here, right now, is let's look in here and see if we got any real loose joints. And I see one right here that I'm not real happy with. So I'm gonna pull this one up and see if I can tighten that up a little bit more in that joint. And I'm seeing some glue squeeze out down there now, so that's good. Same thing up here, you, did you see that? It moved in a little bit. It's exactly what I wanted. Good deal, good deal, good deal. I'm pretty happy with where that's looking. Now one thing you can do is if you get a place in here where your dovetail isn't real good and tight, and most of mine actually look pretty good. I'm not, I don't really have any that are real loose, but I told you I'd show you a trick and I'm gonna see if I can find one that is a little bit loose. Okay, here's one down here, it's just a little bit loose. So I'm gonna, we'll come around here and I'll zoom in on that and show you what I'm talking about. If you look right here, down in the bottom there, my joint's just not coming together just exactly tight like I want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to a scrap piece of wood and I'm gonna cut me a wedge and I'm gonna drive it down in there to tighten that up. So here's my scrap piece of wood and uh, I'm just gonna take my dovetail saw and we're just gonna this wedge is kind of needs to be a little bit of an angle. So I'm gonna take that down. I saw me out a little piece of wood right here. 
I'm going to glue this up real good, put a little piece of, a little bit of glue on this uh, wedge itself. I'm going to come in here and insert that wedge down into that little gap. I'll take me a hammer and I'm going to drive that in there. And we're just going to leave it just like that. Looks messy right now. When we cut those off later, uh, that's going to hide that gap in there. You won't be able to see it at all. And the nice thing is because we're using the same wood that we're using in the project, it's a perfect match. And we'll have the end grain coming out here to match the end grain of the pins and it will just blend right in and you'll never know that there was ever a gap there. So you can go around your whole project and look at that uh, and fix them, fix your little mistakes uh, very easily that way. So now we're just going to let all this uh, sit here and dry and we'll come back probably tomorrow, take the clamps off and uh, continue on with fixing any little small uh, mistakes that might be in there. We'll show you a few more tricks then. Well, we're kind of jumping to the end result here and uh, I apologize, I lost a little bit of, of footage of uh, what we were doing, but I can tell you real quickly the last little steps. We drove the wedges in. I came in with a little cutoff saw. I cut all those off, uh, basically flush with the uh, end of the piece, just flushed them, flushed them off. And um, once that was done, my next little trick that I use uh, to kind of hide any other perfections in here is I take some, again, white Elmer's glue. Don't use a yellow glue for this, use a white glue. And I just put some on my fingers and just smeared it all over these joints and got any little crack or crevice that may still be open. I filled it up with glue and then I took my finger with the glue and I dipped it into some sawdust from where I hand cut the dovetails over by my vise. And basically I took that slurry of glue and sawdust and I just rub it around in there and it fills those holes in with the wood off of this project. And because you're using, again, a clear glue, uh, it will, when it dries, it will be almost a perfect match and it will really hide any little small uh, cracks or crevices that are in there. You should try to fill the big ones with a wedge uh, if you have any, but even the most experienced uh, dovetail cutter is gonna probably have some little small places in there that you can fill in very easily with the glue and uh, sawdust. Once that was done, uh, and once I let my glue dry, I took this over to the belt sander and we sanded everything down flush. Uh, again, these uh, pins and tails are gonna be sticking out just a little bit. You wanna get everything sanded down. And the end result is some very, very nice looking dovetails. Uh, as you can see, uh, you can't see any cracks or crevices in there. And that's what we want. Uh, I can't even really pick out where the wedges go in. If you look real close and you know what you're looking for, you can probably pick up on them. But the average person will never see them, never notice them. And you can really salvage a, uh, a mistake uh, by do using that little trick. Or if you're just inexperienced and learning how to do it for the first time, you can still get some good successful dovetails with using a couple of those tricks. So this box is pretty much done now, at least for what we're gonna cover in this video. I am gonna put a top on this and some hinges, but again, this video was about hand cutting dovetails and not making a box. So we're not gonna cover that part. Uh, but anyway, I hope you, hope you enjoyed. So there you go, guys. That's my method of how I hand cut dovetails. It has worked very good for me. I have cut hundreds, if not thousands of dovetails over the past 20 years, uh, pretty much using this process and uh, I have had very good success, and I think you will too. Again, the biggest thing is get out there and practice. Get your dovetail saw, go practice sawing and practice cutting some dovetails. Do a project, it might just be a simple box like this, and just crank a few out. With each and every one that you do, you're gonna find that your skill gets a little bit better and the results are gonna look better and better. And uh, even if you make a little mistake, you can fix a lot of those with some of these little tricks I showed you with the wedges and with the sawdust and glue. Obviously, we wanna keep those down to a minimum, but hey, let's face it, even the best expert out there in cutting dovetails isn't gonna hit them perfect every time. And these are just some tricks you can do to make them look really good. Uh, I think you will hopefully uh, see that you can look at this and tell that it is cut by hand. You can tell this is not cut with a jig and a router. It has that personal touch of what, what hand cut dovetail should look like. And that's the look I'm going for. Uh, and the people that see my work, I think they really uh, enjoy being able to look at it and tell that it was truly handmade. There you go. Thanks for watching and go practice cutting dovetails.